What's up, guys? Welcome to another fantastic episode of Behind the Counter. I'm your host, Rich Stambolian, and with me, as always, is the late, great Jonathan Adler. Still here, baby. <laughs> the ghost. The ghost. The ghost of a uh, Christmas present. The ghost of all year round. The ghost of Valentine's Day in two weeks. Mm. So what's going on, man? How you doing? I'm great. How, How are, you do- what are you doing for uh, Valentine's Day? I'm beating my wife up. Nice. I, uh, we don't really do the Valentine's Day thing. Oh, yeah? We were thinking of uh, having every cut. Why is the music still going? <laughs> <laughs> it's like Stern. It's like, it just keeps on running. Fast. You can yeah. keep it low in the background. It was just, like it someone's coming very slowly. It'll just make me talk in the intro voice the whole... Yeah, so anyway, <laughs> we're here. Talk to me about Valentine's Day. Uh, all right. You thinking about what? We were like, let's just invite everybody over who's a couple and have like a Valentine's Day party. No, I can't like, do it. That's no. stupid. That is dumb. I got plans. I what are you it. doing? I don't need business. Uh, why'd you ask me then? I want to know your business. All right. <laughs> See if my uh, idea is as good as yours. I don't care. We don't really do Valentine's Day. What about you? Uh, sh- my wife's going to be in Ireland. What? Yeah. I'm going to Ireland too. How when? About that? When? Uh, Valentine's Day. No, you're not. <laughs> <laughs> you guys are going to have why a romantic time. Why is she going to Ireland? Uh, she's taking her mom. That's nice. You said Ireland, not Long Island. Right? Not Long Island. <laughs> Ireland. Long <laughs> Island. Uh, no, we're going to Billy Joel on Monday. Oh, That's our Valentine's Day. Oh, very yeah. nice, man. Yeah. You hate him. I can't stand him. He looks like a pug. He looks like, <laughs> like a pug. <laughs> he looks like mashed potatoes. <laughs> <laughs> he looks like like microwave or mashed potatoes before you put it in the microwave. He's he's That's a piano man. Like. I feel like I wouldn't. Uh, my wife hates singing his song about potato man. <laughs> <laughs> my wife hates Billy Joel. And a few other bands that I like, but I feel like I'll never get her to like Billy Joel. She's come around a little bit to Hall & Oates, but not to, to, to Billy Joel. Uh, Billy Joel is unbearable. Wow. Cannot look at that man. That guy uh, wrote some so weak. great body of music on that guy. Great body. Great body of music on that guy. Mo body. Talk to me about news. There's no news. Uh, there really is no news. Well, the, uh, I, I was hoping you were going to say, how about those horrible... Um, Oh yeah, we can talk about that. Days Future Past pictures so they, that they, they released. Empire Magazine, who's who's now the one that you know makes and breaks most of the uh, comic book news. Oh, those guys are on top, man. Those guys are, the, are they uh, British? They're a British company. I think so. They're the uh, the, the William Randolph Hearst of comic book news. Yeah, so they have like ten different covers for the upcoming. Uh, what's that guy's name? Brian Brian uh, Brian Cranston. Who the who's the director? Brian Singer. Brian Singer. <laughs> Brian, Brian Cranston. Brian Singer's new uh, X Men movie, Days of Future Past. Mm-hmm. Uh, we had great characters. Like Blink looked amazing. Blink yeah. looked really good. Like yeah. dead on. Uh, Wolverine, Wolverine. You know, Wolverine looks like a penis. Yeah. Um. He really is. He looks like a veiny, veiny penis. Um. And there, I mean, like there was like a, a good give and take. Like I liked, I like, I like uh, Michael Fassbender in like the new outfit. It's kind of cool. It's like all black, like black ops mm-hmm. kind of thing. Um. Purple. I, it's purple. I, it's purple. It's all purple. I want to know why. Uh, prof- <laughs> you do adjust your screen. <laughs> Professor X is standing, uh, standing around. Yeah, he's standing around, and you had a weirdly uncomfortable. Like they should have put Toad on the cover. I liked the, the, the costume and everything. <sighs> they shouldn't have included him. But then the Quicksilver came out. Yeah, and uh, he looks terrible. Yeah, terrible. Um, that's that's a weird thing, man. Because like, why would you put that on a magazine cover? He looks like a guy who's trying to sell me Burger King in the nineties. Oh my god. Yeah, uh, it's a little weird. Yeah. This, this is a weird news break uh, for fans that are watching. I don't know if you caught this. But I did. J.G. Jones drew Miracle Man, Miracle Man as, uh, as Randy Orton. As Randy Orton. A little weird. But he always did wrestling, guys. Did he? I thought that was Greg Land. I know Greg Land does a lot of Triple H. For same Wolverine. guy. Isn't the same guy? No. <laughs> <laughs> same dude. Uh, so Tracing. Oh, I don't understand how, like, in this day and age, where, especially if you had uh, an Avengers movie, um, that did awesome, and everything looked friggin' great. Like every single poster with Iron Man on it looks amazing. Why know? would you do this? Why would you come out? I know it's a different. I know it's a different company. I know it's like their whole weird thing, and they're trying to build this as like, yeah, the greatest superhero movie of all time, and the greatest X Men movie of all time, the redemption of the franchise, as everybody has said. Why on uh, God's green earth? Who said this was the redemption of the franchise? Fans. Everybody's trying to the fans of Brian thing. Singer's movies. Right. Okay. Um. Why on God's green earth would you put? That Quicksilver on the cover of anything that sold internationally. Well, because they want, I mean, the, the only reason why they put that dude and his terrible look on, because obviously a character that should not, mm-hmm. should make no, not be selling the movie. Right, right. You know, right like it yeah. may be, you know, it may in motion look better or whatever. It may look more reserved. Yeah. But definitely not a character that you want selling the movie. Um, Kids aren't dumb. 
kids are not dumb. If you were 10 and you saw that, if you were like, between the ages like 5 and 10. You'd and you, be disappointed if you got that figure. You would buy the Wolverine cover twice. Yeah. Right. And if somebody gave you a Quicksilver or Toad figure for your birthday, <laughs> you'd be upset. But you need bad guys to fight. Mm-hmm. You need those guys. I'd make. But the whole reason because it's, it was because they're fighting over the rights of Quicksilver and Scarlet Witch. Right. So they want to launch us in before you get to see a better looking version of Avengers. R- which I feel like we're going to get. You do. They already yeah. cast everybody for it. Yeah. Well, I mean, like when the when the uh, when the costumes come out and like yeah, it's giving me a much cool better stuff. look. Yeah, um, it's it's interesting. It's weird to gripe about it as a fan. I get it. I'm 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 in my thirties. I understand that these movies are like heavily heavily directed towards kids to buy action figures. You know, not so much. I think there's a. I think at this point that most, especially Avengers and stuff like that, mm-hmm. there's a there's a nice happy medium between the marketability for, you know, the young young kids mm-hmm. and also the enjoyability of, you know, 24 to 35. Who both also collect action figures. Yeah, you know, and I think yeah. it comes hand in hand. I mean, I think there's, there, I don't think it's something that you say, oh, you know, the kids are the ones that we're aiming this for. Definitely mm-hmm. not for for the fans of uh, X-Men. Anyone's going to go see X-Men. Right. Except yeah. for me. I'm not going to go see X-Men. You're not going to see it? Nope. Not? I'm not giving that guy money. Who, Brian Singer? Absolutely not. Uh, After Superman Returns and... Uh, everything else that was a movie that we defended for a very long time until we watched it again yeah um but he didn't do x-men 3 right Brett ran did x-men yeah 3. uh this movie it's supposed to be like this huge huge big deal uh i think it's also a little weird to put uh an older patrick stewart in uh in and, armor yeah in like a wheelchair and the same thing with ian mckellen you know like it's very I, uncomfortable i have no problem with them being in the movie but i feel like you know make like do a do a little regal. I would like. I would honestly like to see um, House of M Magneto. Uh, yeah, you know he has the general's outfit yeah. and like the epaulets. Yeah. And he looks like like a regal badass. But it, don't put an old man in armor. You yeah. know it's not a Lord of the Rings movie. I heard a good uh, speaking of Lord of the Rings and Ian McKellen. I I heard a good <laughs> anecdote from him that he uh, when he came on state came on to do The Hobbit mm-hmm. and he got led onto the stage and he was in front of a green screen. He's like, you know, where's so and so? They're gonna be acting with. There's two other actors working. Mm-hmm. He's like, no, we're gonna put them in afterwards, and he started weeping. And he goes like, this, "I never wanted this in my career." <laughs> <laughs> That's a work. <laughs> I don't know. About that. I don't know about that. It's all a work. It's all all work. Hollywood work. wrestling comics. It's, Brian Singer. It's all a friggin' work. I remember. I remember months ago. Mm-hmm. Months ago, when they first announced this, and they showed the first trailer. I was like, "This movie's gonna suck. This movie's gonna be such a disappointing mm-hmm. piece of garbage." Because he still, they still have the mentality that that type of movie, like. You go watch, I, I, people defend X-Men 1 and 2 up and down. Oh, until the cows get home. And I like them. I do right. like them. But they're not, up there. they were the easing into the universe of making believable comic book movies. Right. We're, in a, we're in so far beyond that at this point. We mm-hmm. have such a respectable product with like the Avengers property. Yeah. With the X-Men stuff, I said it was going to be a piece of garbage. People tore me down on Reddit. They attacked me. <laughs> He said, look at the numbers. They gave me financial numbers about how much money they made. Uh, mm-hmm. he, I, I watched Brian Singer's uh, last movie, Jack the Giant Slayer, yeah. a few weeks ago, and that is unbearable. After, wa- after making the time movie, you should be embarrassed to go back to a major franchise. Yeah, yeah. Uh, and they did such a great job with First Class, man. First Class was everything you could have wanted out of an X-Men movie, and now we're going three steps back. We're going to ruin that franchise. Um, yeah, it's, it, I, I feel like... If- how about some bitch the uh, the what? How about some bishop? Uh, I don't know. But then you're gonna have to have like I feel like you need Gambit in the movies. Gambit in the movie. No, because they want to give Chang Tatum a uh, Gambit movie. Um, really? And then we're supposed to getting uh apparently at the end of this movie we're gonna get the because they already have signed on for a sequel to this X Men Apocalypse because it's gonna end with the apocalypse. Mm-hmm. Uh, but I think they're also gonna be teasing into they're working towards a Fantastic Four crossover with the X Men universe. Great makes that makes perfect sense. All blacks. Cast uh, cast Apocalypse. Two seconds. Uh, Vin Diesel. Hell yeah. I was just about to say that. <laughs> yeah, Vin Diesel. Vin uh, Diesel or, the, script or uh, the Mummy. Would you have... Uh, oh, um... That guy. Yeah, I always forget that. It was two of them. I always forget their names. Yeah. Not, uh, not the Scorpion King. Not Billy Zane. No. Yeah. Billy Zane would be a good Apocalypse. Eh, we were looking for bald guys with, like, pretty eyes. <laughs> Is that what we're looking for? Uh, would you have Vin Diesel dance to... Uh, Ooh, surfboard? Yeah. <laughs> Do you watch that video? Yeah, I, I watch... Uh, I, I indulge in all the Grammy stuff. I was trying to think about um, more celebrities for you to throw under the bus. Oh, so give it to me. As we did a couple of weeks ago. Oh, my brain's a little fried on it. Yeah, I, I had a good list the other day. I, I, you can go through the Grammys. It's just so many. Uh, Macklemore. Ooh, I don't like that guy. You love Macklemore. 
I do not like Macklemore. Uh, it was a great meme posted online. It was a mashup of Macklemore and Morgan Freeman. Uh-huh. Mac and Morgan Freeman. <laughs> Did you watch Grammys? Uh, I caught a good chunk of it. Uh, it was. It's weird that everybody was bitching about how the best part about it got cut off. It was, it was the best that, part of the show. And that Trent Reznor got really upset about it. Yeah. Um, it he, was awesome. He's, I want to see Trent Reznor in, uh, in some kind of comic book movie for some reason. Uh, he's in great shape, man. He for, can do it. For me, he was, he was the weird kid that made it. Yeah. Oh, and Marilyn Manson. I don't know if I call what he does making it. I know he made it. He definitely made it. But I think. Have you seen the woman he sleeps with? I feel, well, yeah. I feel Trent Reznor as an artist has, is, has made it, you know. Yeah, well, I mean, dude is a multi Oscar mm-hmm. winner at this point. Right. Won multiple Grammys. I still think he puts on one of the greatest stage performances out there. He does incredible work with like the stage set. Mm-hmm. Uh, I still love Queen of Stone Age. Um, I thought their mm-hmm. performance was great. My favorite performance was Kendrick Lamar, though. I didn't see the Kendrick Lamar. So performance. good. Yeah. So good. Um, he didn't win. No. McElroy won. McElroy. McElroy. You love that song. Don't like that guy. <laughs> <laughs> Friend of the gays, Macklemore. Yo, when uh, I was a kid, my that mama was weird. Told me. Yeah, that was, yeah. Go ahead. Uh, I was just, I was rapping. He's rapping. <laughs> it's a little weird that because I, I caught that part and uh, it's nothing to do with comic books, but it was, it was uh, pop culture news. S- speaking of, co- of pop culture, did you watch Cold Show yet this week? No. So you know what? I missed, uh, I missed like half of it, and then I kind of didn't like pay attention to the other half. I was busy doing something. Armand. Yeah, uh, was it? Yeah. Was it like a big Armand? Yeah. Um, Killed last life. week's last week's was good. It was very good. Uh, so, yeah, going back to the comic book movie thing, like we're getting we're getting good stuff. You know, we're getting good stuff. We're gonna get another Avengers. Uh, Thor, Ant Man's gonna be good. Ant Man's gonna be good. Thor, Captain 3. America's gonna be great. Are gonna be some, yeah. the, the rumor is that Captain America is the best work they've done so far. Ca- for Winter Soldier. Yeah. Okay, I could see that. You know, like because every, it's every a great story with your tier of Marvel movies, they get better and better. Yeah. Uh, Incredible Hulk was good. Iron Man was better. Uh. Iron Man 2 was good. Captain America was better. Mm. I thought Thor was better than Captain America. And then you have the Avengers. You think Thor was better Iron than Captain Man America? Yeah. I don't know. Yeah. I, uh, there's, for me, there's more watchability in the first Thor movie than there is in the first Captain America. Eh, maybe. Uh, then you have Avengers, which set the bar for a friggin' team movie. Yeah. And, you know, after that, you're getting your sequels. You're getting your Avengers 2. You're getting your Ant-Man movie. Um, you're getting Guardians of the Galaxy, which I'm actually really excited but, for. Why wouldn't you be? Um, is it Batista? I'm really excited for Batista. He, that's honestly for you know, like if you guys tune into you know, we do a wrestling show right before this, and we completely take a dump on the guy. <laughs> he, that's the one saving grace for that guy. For like, you know what? He's Drax the Destroyer, and it, it works. Mm-hmm. Um, and I love the casting of uh, Star Lord. Yeah, I, I they're always good with the casting. Mm-hmm. Did you read uh, this week's Guardians of the Galaxy? It was great. It was very good. It was very good. Um, but Shelly's uh, killing that book now. Oh, uh, she's ridiculous. I, I really want to talk about Invincible, but I wish you were up to date. How far behind are you in uh, I do it by the trades. So whatever like, the last trade you like came two, out. two trades back then? No, no. I'm, I got the last trade. That's right. The last cool. one was like the one that wasn't named after uh, a TV show. Mm, this was like the Walking Dead type stuff, like a big moment happening. It's very yeah. good. Um, it was a good week. Very good. Small week, though. It was a small week. I didn't get to read as much as I wanted to. I don't remember half the books I read. Uh, because you were so excited. Uh, yeah, I burned myself. I was like, ah! <laughs> one, uh, my my, uh, I think my first read was Guardians of the Galaxy. I really enjoyed it. It's I like what Marvel's doing now as far as uh, putting your numbering on the top of the cover, like not your issue numbering, but your story arc numbering. Yeah. Uh, you know, like as but like, this was number two though of the storyline. Right, but it's I, don't, a, I don't understand. I think it's a jumping on point. For the book, for that particular book, right? For that particular book, because it is. Yeah, but there's, but I, I understand that. I, remember, it's mm-hmm. a good, it's a good, easy way to market. I think by becoming, I, as a retailer, it becomes very confusing because you have two yeah. number ones on two books, one book that's a number two of a storyline. You have to train yourself to look at the bottom of the book. If uh, this, I don't think it says on the, I don't think it even says it on the bottom of the yeah, book. It does say the, part two of six or whatever. Uh, I thought you meant the numbering, like the actual. No, book no, no. I'm talking about purely like you know, this is number one of six. Mm-hmm. This is number two of oh, six. No, no, or no, anything. no, no. I it's, don't like that. It's it's number one starting point, new storyline. But it's not the starting point. I, I know that, but for that, if you were picking up that book, you can get it based on that and understand what's happening, and then. But you're not. Only because of the last page. But that's but that, that, that's a, I think you're mm-hmm. I think you're you're making it easy for them. Right. I think it's a poor idea. I think in terms mm-hmm. of. You remember, man. You remember how hard it is to sell a story arc to somebody. Oh, I remember. In terms of finding like the stuff, right? Like, yeah, yeah. like this. Uh, excuse me. 
I have Guardians of the Galaxy number one. I thought Guardians of the Galaxy number one came out six months ago. It's a new relaunch, but is this part two of the book? Then why does it say number one on it? I feel bad for people that have to answer these questions. It's a jumping on. It's a starting <laughs> point for the new story. We would do it like if you if you had to go work in a comic store again, would you be able to handle the questions at this point in your yeah, life? Yeah, I think I'm. I think I've done yeah. it so many times. Yeah, it's been a very long time. It's been a long time. I think uh, I think I'd have a nice like happy medium and and kind of taken stride, uh, and then I think it would eventually get back to me. It's, it's been over seven years for both of us. Crazy. Uh, or yeah, it's just really crazy. And this, look where it's led you. <laughs> <laughs> The drink. <laughs> uh, it's been over seven years for both of us, and like it's a good, good little topic. Do you have, <laughs> as a man over thirty at this point, do you have the patience to, if not own a store, because it's different when you own a store, because it's like you know, to work at a store, but to work at a store, no, and no, be able to take orders, no. and to know what's coming through the door every day, no. keep track of everything, no. and then have the question of no. Where does this begin? No. And where does this end? No. No. <laughs> Done. All knows. Out the window. No. Why is Angela no. in this book? I thought Spawn happened. What's up with that? Uh, I think that the they are going with the Jean Grey thing with her. Yes. I, yes. No. no. Uh, I'll uh, I'll agree with that. This was really good. You kind of get the hints of that. I wouldn't be upset if they didn't do it. Uh, I think it's kind of cool. I like the premise of it about how uh, it was a very coy gladiator. Mm. Just kind of being like, kind of came out of the field. Well, we got, she did this at uh, some point, right? Like, but Jason, she, but she hasn't done this yet, right? King oh, Jason, she, we have to kill her, right? Yeah. I liked it. I like that. And I think that this book, um, which I didn't really pick up on Fanny, but how much this group of aliens are uh, the Illuminati of space, right? Right. Yeah. Well, who is the other dude in like the yellow armor? Jason. No, no, no. <laughs> I know Jason Spartax. Who was that other dude? Like, I, I saw it. Like, there's a scroll. There was Gladiator. I think he's a Badoon. No, nah, Badoon would be in full yeah. hairy arms and the green face and all scroll, that. Scroll, Gladiator. There's, like, some dude who looks like a Space Knight. It mm-hmm. was, like, well, it was a cool outfit, but whatever. It might be the Space Knights. Nah. Space, Space kind of Knights. Like, Ram. Ram. Uh, it, you have, and this is kind of, like, we're at the point where Age of Ultron was over for a while, and the end of that was telling the audience that, all the time travel crap destroyed the Marvel universe. We're still dealing with that, and we're still dealing with it, yeah. which is kind of cool. And you know, like the stuff you have, like the stuff from Infinity. Also, the direct result of Age of Ultron is Angela being in this book, and the possibility of her being an other dimensional Jean Grey, uh, which is a possibility. It's a, it's, it's a small possibility, it's but, small. It, but it is one. Uh, and the trial of young Jean Grey, which I find very fascinating. I think Bendis is the the right guy to handle the storyline. Yeah. Um, and I, I, you were saying, man, Pacelli's killing. Yeah, it's a good looking book. It. It's a beautiful book, uh, and it's a really intriguing book. And I think they're upping the ante on it, especially because the movie's coming out. They're making everybody more. Everybody's so well rounded at this point. Well, early on in the book, we we both kind of felt that it wasn't a book that we really wanted mm-hmm. in terms of Guardians of the Galaxy. I think uh, they went through some growing pains. And I think he kind of found yeah. his voice in this book. Yeah, I think also his energy was really towards the X Men stuff beyond anything. Yeah, because like once like Angela fought, uh, they had that silent, uh, they were mostly silent issue between them fighting mm-hmm. Angela and Gamera, right? And leading up to where we are now, I think there's been some really cool, fun stuff. I think there's, they're actually fleshing out the characters a great deal. When more. do you think? Uh, when do you think Miracle Man's popping in? No, I I don't think it's gonna happen until they get to like the meat and potatoes of the reprints. Okay, I think it's gonna be a while. I think I don't think it's gonna be anytime soon. Issue two. Because there's no one, there. I don't think there's anyone there to write them yet. I don't think they have, like, you know, I don't think Hickman's willing to put him into a book, like, mm-hmm. put him into Avengers book, because there's too many godlike characters in that book anyway. Right. Um, but he'll show. You know he's going to show. They're not going to be printing that book if they're not going to use that guy. Right, yeah. I want Young Nasty Man more yeah. than anything. I don't want Michael Man. I want Young Nasty uh, Man. I don't think you're going to get a lot of the... I, I, wanna, I want, like, <laughs> the kid, characters, kid yeah. Miracle Man. I, you know, I don't think you're going to get anything. You're going to get the main guy. Young Nasty Man. Um, And that's it. Uh... That's down the line, and that's like kind of getting stuff. If you read the reprints, it doesn't acknowledge who wrote them. Uh, the original writer. It just says the original writer. The OG. You know, the OG. Um, so that's it's kind of something to look forward to. Do you think there's any chance of Angela being in the Guardians movie? No. Just straight Guardians. Yeah, I, I think there's. Mm-hmm. I think that's uh, that's saying too much about the property because it's still it's still sticky. I mean, it's still McFarlane and yeah. Game, and I don't think they want to do that for the film. This this is a good litmus test for Marvel to see if they can put out faces of characters that nobody knows about. This is the thing. I don't think it's going to do well. 
Okay. I, I unless like some magical hype machine's gonna happen, mm-hmm. uh, I think it's a very, very difficult movie to uh, to sell to the audience. I think it's uh you you know what? If if they went into it with the mindset of how do how box office numbers work and why people go to see movies regardless of what's in them. Because uh, there's no draw. We haven't seen that yet. If you if you like uh, movies and you're just a moviegoer, not a comic fan, but you're yeah. just like, you're a fan of the cinema, uh, they have to appeal to that kind of like... Space stuff? The impetus of, hey, you want to see this movie. Like, for example, like, take her, you know? Uh, it looks like it's going to be... It looks like a great movie. It's a great movie. Um Hawkeye Phoenix is in it. Scarlett Johansson's in it. You have like two big draws in there. It's not everybody's cup of tea. I feel you know. Yeah, but that's Oscar caliber movie. That's a that's an Oscar movie. That's right. a different story. Like you're not going for marketing at all for that some that that type of movie. Guardians of the Galaxy is a ten pole picture. Uh-huh. Uh huh. It's starting a new, you know, type of world that they can deal with. You know, we're eventually going to Thanos. We're eventually getting into all the spacefaring stuff. So I think that it's a tough sell. I think they're very. Very very tough sell. And yeah. I, th- I think that uh, you think it's going to be a good movie though. I don't know. It's 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 weird because like it could be a really great uh, recreation of the comic book mm-hmm. and kind of nail like all the the right things and get that great personality that the Guardians of the Galaxy have, mm-hmm. or it could be the Total Recall make uh, remake. Okay, where it's just like because it's space is a tough thing to do. I think a yeah. lot of people kind of just want to do Tatooine and. Just like try and like throw a bar into it, and that makes an interesting yeah. type of thing, and just have like a bunch of lasers. And I think that there's a little bit more to those characters, and I don't think it's gonna translate very well. Um, and we I, don't, and the, and who James Gunn directing it? Yeah. He doesn't really have a lot behind him. See, as a as a fan, I would like to see this movie be directed in very uh, in that very off kilter military type style that Battlestar would direct it in. Yeah, uh, which would work for me. You yeah. know, it would be like an awesome a lot of Star Lord drinking it by himself. Yeah, a lot of stuff like, drinking by himself, like a lot of like weird heated moments with Gamera. And you're like, wow, you know, he's a lot of, like George Bush. But you're gonna get, you're gonna get a lot of, like I was saying, this is like a litmus test for Marvel to see, like, you know what, this is kind of an obscure franchise. We have a lot of great characters in here. They're somehow loosely related to our main core of characters, or we're gonna make them related to them in some way. The kids are gonna love it. How do we make this good? How do we make Star Lord on par with an Iron Man? Or yeah. how do we make Drax on par with a Hulk? How do we make Rocket Raccoon on par with the Hawkeye? Hawkeye. <laughs> Black Widow. Yeah. You know. Uh I think that I think they can do it. I'm hoping it's just a good flick. I hope so. You know. Because uh, it's because they're taking there's two big chances. There's that one and Ant Man is a big chance also. Yeah. And who's uh, Paul Rudd was cast as Ant Man. Yeah, Paul Rudd and Michael Douglas. What was the uh it was Michael Douglas cast as uh Hank. As Pym, right? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Very interesting stuff. I hope so. What else did you read this week? Uh, I read Spidey. You read that? No, I didn't. Awesome. I think I read like I read Saga. Saga was fantastic. Saga was really great. Uh, really good. Like, was was this the end of? Is he taking another hiatus after this? No, this is just a a big mm-hmm. gigantic time jump. See, I thought because like this was like the end of volume two, maybe. Uh, I mean, this is the, definitely the, the end of the second story arc, right? Because right. it was them getting you know off planet and then getting to the writer, and then the writer, you know, the, yeah. at the uh, the lighthouse was like the rest of the storyline. I think it was fantastic. I I, I kind of forget how many moving parts are going on in that book sometimes. Right. Whenever I pick it up, I'm like, mm-hmm. oh yeah, like look at the gigantic supporting cast they have now in this book. That's one of those books that I can't recommend highly enough. Yeah. Anybody who's like, oh, you know, it's like, a tough sell. Also, what about it, it's a very tough sell, but I, yeah, I think it's one I of can't sell that book in, all, in two lines. Really? Mm-mm. Okay. How would you sell Saga? I, I can't. I, I don't. Yeah. I think it's something that you do need to kind of uh, allow someone to kind of uh, explore for themselves, but it's a matter of them investing into that. Like Star Wars. Like why Last Man is easy to, is easy to pitch. Right, yeah. Ex Machina was easy to pitch. Mm-hmm. I think Saga, you know, two star-crossed lovers from different races in a fantasy world, raise a baby, and a robot is coming after them. It's very, it's, you know, it's the... The book is completely ridiculous. All their ideas are completely ridiculous, and that's where it succeeds. But it's the human crap that really comes into it. Mm-hmm. It's the writing and the personalities of those characters, like the two gay fish reporters, <laughs> and like yeah. the, you know, like and the and the prince robots, uh, porn obsession, and then like the the idea that this cyclopean writer is like writing these really trash novels, but they're looked at as like this incredibly powerful fiction right. that's like the Shakespeare of their time. Mm. 
and like lost loves and aging and like all the bounty hunter stuff. It's so convoluted and so crazy, but it's so it's so Brian K. Vaughan and he, and he manages to to kind of layer everything just just mm-hmm. right. Romeo and Juliet in outer space with robots and uh, and a big cat that knows when you're lying. Who wants that? <laughs> <laughs> I, if somebody gave you that pitch, would you want that? But I'm not the everyday guy. Hmm. We're, we're, t- we're selling to children. Everyday John. Everyday John. I don't think you're selling this book to children. No. <laughs> children should like, not hey, be kid, reading this book. You like Walking Dead? You know, love this book. You want to see a cat that knows half a, when you're lying? You want to see half a boob? <laughs> Show you half a boob? Good amount of side boob in that book. Uh, I read that. I read uh, Guardians and I read Uncanny. Uncanny was great. Uh, I know that's your book of the week, Uncanny Avengers. Yeah, of course it's my book of the week. How uh, can that, I, I, I can't even fathom that that's not your book of the week. Thor God of Thunder is my book Why? of the week. Why? Amazing story. Why? Awesome standalone issue. Why? What do you mean, why? Why? I thought it was really pretty. I think it's a very, very pretty looking book, but I thought it was uh, a story I've seen a hundred times over with, with Thor. Okay. I don't, like, maybe it's because I just saw The Hobbit. I'm not ready for another dragon story. Okay. Um, <laughs> I like the little twist. Uh-huh. I like the weirdness of the dragon and everything like that uh-huh. near the end where he's just like a psychopath. Um, but I liked it. Mm-hmm. But it's definitely not even my top three for this week. Really? I think um, I think you're easily sold on uh, like old Norse mythology being in your books. The book, uh, the book was very pretty. It was one of the most it was, gorgeous it, issues. It's a heavy metal issue. Yeah, um, I think that's that's also why it's uh, it's, it's my book of the week. I love the story. I like one off stories like that. And Mark Waid did a lot of those in Daredevil. Yeah, where you get you don't get a full like in your face story. You kind of get it's a story with a lot of subtext. And I like young Thor stories. Me too. With I Jason do. Aaron layering the subtext in there, basically saying like he's an irresponsible idiot, but he has to learn how to be a responsible god. You know. But that's the story of Thor. Yeah. That is essentially the heart of what Thor mm-hmm. is, especially the early years. But and he doesn't get it. Doesn't get it. But uh, I like. Don't get me wrong. I love the story. I thought it was great. Uh huh. But I just don't see it as the 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 standout for the week where I'm like, oh yeah, like definitely. Mm-hmm. You know, Jason Aaron, you killed it this time. Awesome, dude. Okay. Uh, okay, Avengers, different story. Also, a Thor book. Right. <laughs> <laughs> and, like, I feel like that was, now, like, it's been a very good year for Thor. Uh, yeah. I think we've got some really, like, I think, I always like when Thor is more excellent in a... Team setting? A team setting. Mm. And, like, definitely he shines in Uncanny. He shines in Avengers. Yeah. Uh, in Uncanny Avengers in this issue, it's basically Thor fighting the Apocalypse Twins mm-hmm. with, a, with a good dose of Captain America in there. You get to see Thor rocking the uh, the shield and the hammer. Right. Uh, smacking the crap out of people. Battle of Wills. The dude ends the battle with his whole entire left side of his body being burned off. Yep. It was so kick-ass. The art was fantastic. You got a crazy looking uh, time team, the, the Infinity, the Infinity Break, or whatever the hell they were called. Yeah, you got uh, Vision Phoenix at some point. Yeah, uh, you had a great line from Captain America, and he's like, "Oh yeah, you missed me." You know, like what you know, I do two things, do things very well, and that one of them is uh, throw the shield. Right. Yeah, it's just good. Like it was all the things I could want out of that type of book. The other one is America. Uh, I do America, <laughs> and I do the shield. Uh, was it? Was it America? I don't know. I do America. <laughs> he, uh, not, uh, and uh, and also, Cap's face is half burned off. Yeah, the dude is gnarly looking, man. And they're still trying to stop the um the, the apocalypse twins. No, the uh, what the celestial. Oh, uh, the, the Exeter. Baby. Exeter, Exeter. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. From yeah. from stepping on uh, Manhattan. Um, yeah, and I like the beginning part with the with all the geniuses, Doctor Doom and uh, Richards uh-huh. and Pym and and Tony. And they're like this. Oh, we gotta get the you know Doom's like we gotta get the ultimate no fires. Like we have to go back in time. Yeah. And they don't even know what what the story is until Wasp shows up and shows her background of what happened. Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Far stretch also for me for McNiven man because that guy when that dude was drawing Civil War, amazing, mm-hmm. distinctive art style. Mm-hmm. Uh, not so much in this book, man. It seemed like very rushed or like he had to meet a deadline. Oh, I didn't think so at all. Yeah. I think he's changed the style a great deal to to appease to putting out a monthly book. Right. Uh, and he's one of those guys that comes in like every like four or six issues and does his thing. Uh, I don't think it was rushed at all. I think there, there was two artists in the book. I think. Yeah. Um, there was someone doing finishes for the stuff that was with Kang in the beginning of mm. it. But I mean, like the, Thor kicking ass. What more did you ask for? Still not my book of the week. It was great. It was great. It was my number two book. Mm. Thor got us under a little small little story of him getting drunk with a mm. dragon, and 
And then the dragon flipping My, out because his dad yelled at him. Beyond this, it was like it was a it was invincible. It was uncanny. And then mm, I don't know what the other one was. What else came with this week? Superior Spidey. That was that was very good. That's this is you know this is winding up the yeah the storyline. Uh, there's a nice little reveal in it. Um, very good. Yeah, Reverse. I gotta get that. I uh, I and Infinite uh, in Humanity number two came out also this week. Uh, I read that. That was pretty good. Which I I, I kind of find interesting because the art the art team is different on this. Is it's like the first issue ended with, um, Karnak killing himself, right? Yeah. Uh, I flipped through it and I was like, oh, this is kind of cool. It's like a heavy concentration on Medusa. Did you read that issue? Uh, no, I gotta get I gotta get through it. The first one? Yes. You never read the first one? No, no I did read the first. Oh, okay. One. It was awesome. Yeah. Uh, I think it, man. Uh, I I gotta read that. There's a. Um, but it's over now. That's it. Yeah, because he's not doing the book anymore. Oh, that's this right. This is the book that Mad Faction walked off of. Yeah. He just CM Punked it. There's the, uh, there's the shake-up in the book that I completely... Yeah, what's uh, his name? That's uh, Charles Sully. Sully, yeah. yeah. And that he was, took over uh, Thunderbolts a while. Which is yeah. incredible now. Yeah. Uh, are you behind on that book? Yeah. Um, get back on it, because it really doesn't prove mm-hmm. Ghost Rider's on the team now, obviously. And there's a great issue where everything is from the leader's point of view. It was like I think his first issue on the book mm-hmm. that is absolutely tremendous. It's definitely become a book that's definitely more interesting than it used to be. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I think uh, it was le- this week's um, was the last issue of uh, X Men Legacy too, right? Uh, I don't know. I f- I'm so behind mm-hmm. on that book. It did come out this week. Yes. Yeah, it's kind of it's kind of an interesting thing because like there's a lot of books out there, and some of them like we were talking about this uh, a few weeks ago about how. Uh, the X Men books are you like at this point like what the what Marvel always do and I I really kind of want to understand what their mentality with the X Men books is ever since like we were kids it was like uh, growing up we had two X Men books we had X Factor and we had Uncanny right right and then you had New Mutants X Force uh, Wolverine mm. uh, and how about Classic whatever else Classic X Men the reprints yeah you know. And then you had the Jim Lee X-Men come out. So you had a ton of books. And then they'll streamline it and say, you're only getting two X-Men books. You're getting X-Men, you're getting Uncanny X-Men. Mm. And it goes like that for a while, and then it turns into, you're getting Extreme X-Men, you're getting Uncanny this, you're getting Canny this, you're getting Extreme X-Force, yeah. you're getting Uncanny X-Force. Yeah. Let's streamline them again, put out two books. But that always happens. Uh, Legacy's never done well. Legacy's yeah. never done well. It's always been mm-hmm. like a book that kind of was mellow the road. I thought it's great. I yeah. love Science Burrier. I like the Legion storyline. Mm-hmm. There was Red Skull was in the book for a little while. Yeah. Um, I really am a fan of the X Men book, but yeah, there's always a culling of the books after a while. Yeah, it's, uh... No mics. What do you mean? No mic on Rich. Cut Bro? me out. There we go. There we go. There we go. I think you you hit it with funky your elbow. elbows. Oh, you you tapped it with your elbow. Sorry. Do you want to get a drink that bad? That you... <laughs> <laughs> no. All right, guys. I, I off. Guys, show is over. Um. The best Stop part about having er, <laughs> earlier uh, earlier time slot is we get out of here earlier. Yes, to have extra time slots. Um, <laughs> more time slots. More time slots. No more. Uh, no more T W I R T. It's on uh, at two. Oh, so you do it before we get yeah, here? Yeah, I do it way before you get here. Nice, nice, very nice. Um, so X- trying to look what other books came out this week. X Men books, X Men movies. Uh, Captain America three just got a director. Yeah, no, uh, Thor three guy director. I got to check out the uh, the Tom Hiddleston Thor. It was good. Uh, audition. Thor got uh, writers this week. It, okay, it's, it's greenlit. Captain America. That I can talk about until the the second one comes out. How far do you see? How far do you see your um beat franchise player play, franchise player movies going? Uh, I th- I would be surprised if it goes beyond the next year. Okay. I think there's there has to be some type of weird like because everything's not going to be golden and we mm-hmm. can see that by Shield the Shield TV show. Right. Um, I think eventually these guys are going to want to do something else. It's a big obligation, man. Yeah. It's at least two ye- two obligations a year between your solo movie and the Avengers. Yeah. You got you got to have a break at yeah. some point. Yeah. And you can do some other stuff. It was like you know Christian Bale hung, hung up on. Uh, on Batman, like that's a huge obligation, right? And now, like the guy is not working; he's doing three movies a year, right? Right. All yeah. for the better. Um, yeah, it's 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 fascinating how like the studio stuff works and how like actors' mentalities work. Obviously, you know, we're just fans, and you want like you, I want what I want, you know, and I know what I want, and that is a cohesive Marvel universe where Sony gives up the rights to Spider Man, and never gonna happen, and the X Men come back into the fray, and you get like 
You get reboots. I would keep the same. I would honestly keep Jackman as as Wolverine. No, Danzig. Yeah, and, uh, but but at that <laughs> point, you know, like that would be like a sixty three year old old, Danzig. old man Logan. <clears throat> and the guy probably can't act. He can't act. Uh, he definitely can't act. Uh, Jackman does fine. I think mm-hmm. he's. I think he's. I'm okay with him being Wolverine. He'd be a holdover. You know the other surprising holdover for me? Chicklis is a thing. You are out of your <laughs> friggin' mind. You don't even like that movie. Who do you want as a thing? Anyone else? Brock Lesnar. No. No. My uh, my legitimate thing. Do you watch that? I don't watch it. My folks watch it. Uh, um, you watch it. No. White Collar? No. Did you watch Carnival back in the day on HBO? Carnival. Here, Carnival. And, here and there, yeah. There was a dude who had like a limp on that show, and now uh-huh. he's on, on uh, White Collar. That dude is like Ben Grimm, mm-hmm. like, you know, before he was Ben Grimm. Okay. He could do the gruff thing. He'd do the whole nine. He was awesome. Chickless is one of the worst casting choices ever for the thing. Why? The bo- he embodies nothing about the thing. You, did you see the same movie? Yes, yes, Because yes. there's nothing redeeming. Uh-huh. Like, outside of him, you know, mm-hmm. him and Ben Grimm mode, awful. And uh-huh. his thing, even worse. Uh-huh. Why do we want this? Uh, I like Chickless. I always like Chickless. I think you, I think you, you, you. I have only, a commission. You pull from, from like Lost and like the Shield Boys. <laughs> I think you're stuck in like early 2000s TV world. Uh, I would cast Kenny Johnson as Hawkeye. Boy, I would cast. Uh, he, would well, be a, he would be a good Hawkeye. Well, he would. <laughs> See, sometimes would. I'm right. I'll give you that one. I'll give you that one. Um, Chickless, no freaking way. I would cast um, Walton Goggins in a Shield role. Nah, man, I'd save him for a B-level villain or Rowan or as uh, Wyatt Wingfoot. Yeah. Um, no. Yeah, hell yeah. He's a gigantic American Indian. Chickless, or I would actually make uh, the three of them uh, the wrecking crew. I know who I want. You know who I want. Uh, you know who I want Chickless to play hmm. Zarko the Tomorrow Man. <laughs> All right, <laughs> that's what like a stubby fat guy with a bald head. Psycho and Man. Boom. Psycho Man. Psycho I'll, Man. I'll, Perfect. He see the Chickless is only good mm-hmm. at one thing. He's good at being Chickless. Yeah. He he's not good character. I think the Shield and the Commission are like pseudo sequels. Like he's great yeah. at being you know the Shield. Yeah. Uh, arguably the same could be said about Bruce Willis. Bruce Willis plays the same guy in every yeah, single so movie. Yeah, Denzel Washington does the same thing. Like mm-hmm. Denzel Washington playing Denzel Washington for years. Would you put... Okay. Would, okay. Uh-huh. 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 Would you put, uh, if you had to cast Denzel Washington in a Marvel movie? Uh, Blade. <laughs> uh, Miles Morales. I want... It's going to be... It's going to be the Growing end... Miles Morales. The end of... Uh, the end of uh, Guardians of the Galaxy is Wesley Snipes' is Blade. <laughs> they find him. They find him in a space egg. Denzel Washington as Magus. Okay, as, right. as Adam Warlock and Magus. Mm-hmm. Boom. That's good. Uh, I, I I wouldn't cast them. I wouldn't cast no. them. I think it's. I think um, like who are the big ones left? Like Doctor Strange is probably going to get introduced. Iron Fist. But we have all the TV stuff coming out too. We have yeah. like the Luke Cage, the Daredevil TV show, the Alias show, which is going to be awful. Mm-hmm. There's no possible way that Alias show is going to be worth watching. Oh no way! I, they probably have to give it a different name too. Uh yeah they do they're gonna do Jessica Jones yeah, yeah. Uh, I think or it's gonna be called Alias ja- Je- Jessica Jessica Jones um well you know who the writer for the show is the same person who did uh, the Twilight movies oh yes it's perfect yes exactly what I want I have a hard hitting noir about a woman having anal sex with Luke Cage and that you know <laughs> what I, I've talked to uh I've talked to a lot of people who've read that book and that's always the thing that comes up the weird question because you know but you know what it was. That, it's her biting her bottom lip during that. She got scene. anal, dude. No, yeah. she got anal. Like she definitely yeah. got anal. And then they, they're married. They have a baby mm-hmm. together. So it all worked yeah. out. The uh, human biology. Yeah, <laughs> it happens. She want, and she says, "I wanted to feel something different." Right. And she talks about it's put mm-hmm. in a butt. Yeah. Um. That came. It was a comic book. That came. It was. Uh, I'll give the background for it. it came out a really bad, at a weird time in, in comics. There weren't a lot of stuff out that was kind of risque yeah and it kind of came out of nowhere no one knew what the book was about and the the first issue have heavily figured on her getting sodomized this character being sodomized by luke cage willingly right she was a it it came out at a weird time where like you had a a handful of marvel characters that really nobody knew what to do with so they made a new one what bendis (laughs) did was they he took staples of comics that people weren't using you know like luke cage um, I think Iron Fist was in it. Purple Man. Right, Purple Man. All B-level characters. B-level characters and put him in an adult-only Marvel book. So Luke she was Cage... A, she was a private eye. She's, right. a failed, she's a failed superhero who stops being a superhero. She's completely made up for the story and becomes a private eye. And she's dealing with these weird, like, under-the-radar under kind of cases. Right. 
like purple man was like the major one where she like, was raped by purple man yeah and it was like an adult only thing you had the returning luke cage who went from like the tiara wearing you know black power yeah. 70s disco superhero yeah. to this dude who's just behind a bar like banging white oh. chicks <laughs> you know am i right yep yeah and uh, that was the beginning that in the the cage uh max series put it oh that was awesome that has nothing to do with anything too yeah. Uh, I did find that the other day in my collection because Azarella did that, and it was it was the same character, but he was a gangster in Harlem. Yeah, it was also kind of like the same character, but he was he was totally thugged out. Also, one of the weirdest depictions of Tombstone I ever saw. Ah, oh, what was it? He had like dreads, and he was like they made him very albino looking. That's right. Like yeah. he was like not so much like a gigantic white guy <laughs> with like an upturned nose. Mm. He was a gigantic weirdo albino. He looked like Brick from Flash. Right, right, like right. that guy he was fighting for the year. <laughs> yeah, Brick Wall or his name. Was. I uh, uh, not I think, Flash Green Arrow. I think I'm a. Uh, I, I know, I know, I know what the reference yeah. was. Uh, um, I think I'm one issue behind. Um, Superior Foes of Spider Man. What a book! I know. Was, oh, so so you saw the reveal about Beetle then? She's Tombstone's daughter. Yeah, right. So that was that the last issue. That was the issue for the last. The next okay. issue was all about her and Tombstone. Um, like it's her origin. Like no, the, you know what? I did. That was the last issue. Because they, they reveal okay. at the end of one issue, and the next issue is just covering her like background. birthday party and how she wanted to be a career criminal, yeah. and then gives the beetle armor. Do you, what kind of voice do you give Tombstone? Oh, I do the whisper. Like I, that was some of the most the Sabashima like Spidey stuff. Oh yeah, was like the the heart of my comic book reading in like when you were kids. Spider Man, like that was like I, Web, I still love it. Like, Web of Spider Man with the Lobo Brothers. Yeah, Lobo Tombstone. Brothers, Tombstone, All like Jackie Rocket stuff. Racer, yeah. Prowler, yeah. Mm. and like Chubby Mary Jane that yep. was always crying. <laughs> it was so good, and like and like yeah. the the two like I remember they had the split issues where it was like Robbie Robinson getting framed for murder right. with Rob, with uh, Tombstone, yeah. and then like him like showing up in prison and Tombstone's there and, like <laughs> making him his bitch. Yeah, and I remember them somehow getting escaping, getting on a plane. And them jumping out of the plane. Yes. And they had that awesome issue where it's like Robbie in a cornfield trying to get away from Tombstone. Yeah. And he stabs him in the chest with the pitchfork. Mm -hmm. And he's like, like just Tombstone. I thought we were friends, Robbie. It's just cold blooded. <laughs> and he walks into the cornfield. <laughs> and I was like, that's so great. Yeah. I thought he was. And you know what they did? The Tombstone was a great character. And they can never do this again. Yeah. Because all they did with him was like have a limo pull up in the background and have like you see this albino guy like who's that guy in the background? Yeah. They did that for a year. They showed just his eyes. Yeah. And that's it. Um, for when I was a kid, for some reason, I Silver mean. I thought he was an albino black guy. He is an albino black guy. He's not. Well, they've they've changed they, it out. They've of it. changed him. He's a white guy. Yeah, because yeah. because originally the idea was that's why Robbie Robinson because Robbie Robinson wasn't associating white people back then. Right. He was a, he was a, a racist. <laughs> yeah. A, a bigot man. Uh, a bigot man. A bigot man. Uh, but yeah, they've re retconned yeah. it where he's just like a mutant with like white skin. Yeah. Um. I see. Like I. I like him better as a black guy. The uh, the formative years of like the black guy that Greg Gar Gargoyle was. Uh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Turns out to be French. Holy French. Uh. Oh, weird. When, weird. when you're kids, you're weird. You know. Well, that was your thing. That was my thing. Weird thought. <laughs> no. no. Bless you. I was. I'm complete. I was always convinced that that guy is definitely a Frenchy French. Just a French guy. Yeah, because he had the mustache and everything. Um, and he went ooh la. I never noticed the mustache until I was much older. Cool looking character, man. Yeah. Uh, who was doing that Thor when he was the big bad guy in Thor? Who was doing that? Oh, Joe man. Kelly. Uh, it was. I think it was Fraction. No. When they did. When they did the. Mm -hmm. uh, it was Siege, right? No, 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 no. I'm not or talking about that stuff. I'm talking about when figure itself. No, way before this. this was this was like early two thousands. Yeah. Nah. When when he was like the major bad guy and like they had these awesome covers of like Greg Gargoyle on the throne holding the hammer and like he was like the major villain for like most of the year. Was it Straczynski? May have been. Mm, I think it was like Joe Kelly or Casey. It was like okay. one of the Joes. Either JMS or uh, it was one of the three Joes. Yeah. I'll look it up. Anyway. Uh, what were we saying before that? Oh, we're talking about how uh, Web of Spider Man was kind of like that comic during our formative years. So good, which was a really good comic. And I, I, I had, Will O Wisp, I, I Carrion, like mm -hmm. all that cool stuff. And I remember having like a ton of issues, and then at one point, um, just missing. Q. I know there's like holes in my collection where I, kinda, I would go to the con and just buy all those again, and hopefully not be disappointed Bushima as an was, adult. Yeah, <laughs> well, you're probably gonna be disappointed. Yeah. Uh, but still, Bashima was my favorite guy who did. Um, who drew Harry and Norman? Oh, yeah, because they got the, they got like the body right, and he made like the yeah the the hair, the mouth, 
and like they, he did that really awesome. I I loved it. It was it was right before Clone Saga started happening. Yeah, where uh, Harry did that whole gotcha storyline. Yeah, where he became good and then he like died and then he came back and he was like torturing. He was the one that came up with the. Uh, I think he did the um the fake parents to him and yes. then he dies in the fire and the whole nine. Yeah. It was awesome, awesome stuff. And I I think he is was way ahead of his time when it came to um having a lot of like really cool stack action that you'd see with like Marcos Martin and stuff like that. Yeah. Uh That's good stuff. Loved it. The Lower Brothers made me so uncomfortable when I was a kid. Yeah, totally so Tombstone cuz two <laughs> werewolves that are running a mafia is a pretty awesome idea. Yeah, like two weird guys who just like they'd have to get naked and just be like a lot of hammerhead at that time too. I always found Hammerhead. I never took him I, seriously. I always I found him it. such a weird, like such a weird character, and I kind of like his place now in the Marvel universe. Where like, uh, I forgot who did that story. I think it was like a one-off, or maybe it was like when they were doing the um, brand new day stuff, the Mister Negative stuff. Yeah, when he got when he got revamped yeah. and he became like a super hard hitter, right? Yeah. And he was like a real badass, like mafia guy. Yeah. yeah, the Spider-Man universe is there's so much below the surface. Well, I mean, especially now with like what they've done in the last few years with like mm -hmm. the brand new day stuff and yeah. like what Slot's been bringing the character to, right. um, and there's such a focus on, especially like the way that you, you read the last few, like Hobgoblin has that that dial of service where you get like a, you buy your franchise and you get like become like a B level character, right? Yeah. Like that's a great way to incorporate all those characters that like Slot mm -hmm. and me and you love, right? Yeah. Uh, I dig it, man. Like, and I, Superior Force of Spider Man, Spider Man Team Up is is a good book. I too. haven't picked up uh, Team Up at Team all. Team Up's become great. Yeah, yeah. Uh, I really enjoy Superior Foes because it's it's such a good whoever whoever wrote, um, I can't place uh who wrote it off the top of your head. Nothing. No. Uh, but whoever wrote it has did this such, last week too. Has such a love for New York. Which oh, is, which hell is yeah. awesome. It was like the whole issue. I think it was uh the issue before this one where uh boomerang uh. Uh, Boomerang used to pitch for the Mets. Yeah, see, that's the yeah. thing. Is like, I, I think part of the success of the book is that Hawkeye did so well mm -hmm. that they're taking that same approach because Boomerang is basically Hawkeye in that book. Right. And they're taking like the level of a rogue thing and applying it to mm -hmm. all of them. And they all have this thing char character. Except he's a piece of crap. He's a piece of garbage. Yeah. Absolute piece of garbage. Kills friends. Mm -hmm. I, I have to say who writes this book because we did this last week. To this it's good. Guy. A lot. Like, I feel like Nick Spencer. Yes, yes. He, that's... that's um, that's the best book he's writing. Steve Lieber doing the art on screen. The too. um the cool thing about Superior Foes of Spider Man is that it's a good juxtaposition between an Avengers book where they're just like the villains who are on the team. They're trying to be a team and they do the same thing that the Avengers do, which is eating and planning. Uh, and you know they these guys like go out and get ha they they'll do a job, come back, get hammered, not agree on who's the boss, not agree on a plan. And they just kind of so have they like call this, themselves Sensor Six, right? And they're like this rinky dink operation yeah. led by a complete scumbag, egomaniac. Who I would have never thought, like going from the boomerang of of Yor. Well, I mean, this is a, know. this is a follow up of the Thunderbolts, right? Or right. boomerang stuff, because the Thunderbolts boomerang stuff is is apart from this, my favorite boomerang stuff yeah. that they've ever done. You know, like new costumes, awesome. They really fleshed out his attitude about how he's just kind of like in it for himself. Yeah, but he's like a totally. Like yeah. he's he's like a smiley glad hand, you yeah. Know? Like oh, I'll help you out if you help me out, bro. Yeah. Solid book, man. Great book. But that's a step that and that's kind of it. Superior Foes is is like my dream book, where it's completely a you know my time wet dream of B level characters, yeah, communicating and doing haste together. Like any book that has shockers the main character is amazing, right? Uh, you know what? And and also and it's getting a lot of traction too. I think next yeah. year it may be a contender for the Eisners. Okay. See this uh, a book like that and a book like Hawkeye. Uh, I really like the tongue in cheek take on your mainstream comic franchise because it shows the uh, the holes and the flaws in it. Like in the in that two issues ago where it's um, Mach One talking to Boomerang and he's like, "Did you just try to leave through?" The, and he couldn't fit through the window. Mm -hmm. He's like, "Why don't you just take the stairs, man?" Yeah. All right. Yeah. See you next week. I'm glad we're still seeing these characters being played. Yeah. I I love Thunderbolts. I read Thunderbolts through you know thick and thin. And I'm glad we're still utilizing, you know, these, you know, bad guys at the heart of gold type of thing. Yeah. Or not. Or not. Yeah. yeah. They're all pieces of crap. Yeah. But I want to see that, you know, like when we were kids, you never got like, the the closest we came was uh, uh, the maestro. Yeah. You know, because. Not that guy. He was, <laughs> is the, the evil Hulk, you know. Yeah. All right. On that note, uh, we're going to, we're going to ring it in. Oh, wow. Yeah. Ring it out. Ring it out. All right. Uh, this has been uh, Behind the Counter. Uh, I'm your host, Rich Stambolian. And I'm Mookie Blaylock. All right. Good night.